What's going on, guys? It's your boy TMI. I am the Mass Investor. Thank you guys very much for tuning in right now. No matter what time it is, no matter where you guys are, I do appreciate you guys for being here. Now, I do want to show you guys a video of a CEO speaking about infinite shares and break down exactly what he said, why he said it, and what the issues are with what he was saying, okay? Before we get into that, guys, do me a quick favor. Smash that like button, press subscribe, and of course, hit that bell notification because you guys soon will not be getting notifications for a lot of these videos that I am putting out, and that would definitely help to support the channel. Now, first the intro, then the info. Let's get it. <laughs> Just now from the Piper Sandler Global Exchange Conference is Doug Sifu. He is the CEO of Virtue Financial, and he's with our very own Bob Pisani. Bob? Hello, Kelly. Uh, so Chair Gensler has just given a major speech here uh, at the Piper Sandler Exchange Conference. And Doug, uh, he's not happy about payment for order flow. Now, this is the process whereby brokers send right. their orders to market makers like you, Virtu. He says it's riddled with conflicts of interest. He's not happy about the fact that he says there's only a few market makers that are really doing this. Uh, he wants more competition out there. Is the average retail trader being disadvantaged here? I mean, fundamentally, the answer is no. And I think uh, uh, payment for order flow. Can we just stop by asking why the hell he's interviewing the CEO of somebody who profits off of payment for order flow? I mean, can, if you were to put bias in a picture, bias in a picture would look something along the lines of this. Hey, buddy. Yeah, that guy right there. That's bias, all right? Oh, it's something that's been around for 20 to 30 years. And it really has fostered innovation and competition within the marketplace. And I should say that within the marketplace, we have roughly 250 broker-dealer wealth management clients that send us retail orders. 95% of them don't take a rebate or payment for order flow. So again, the, the chair, with all due respect, is conflating the issue of payment for order flow with the ecosystem that has evolved in this country for retail trading, which has really enabled retail investors to have instantaneous execution at essentially zero commission on 8,000 listed names. Yeah. You know, the cliche that markets have never been better is actually factually correct. Yeah, I have been covering the markets for 30 Markets have never been better for who? Yes, it costs less per trade, but you're actually fixing the trades themselves with the data to front run and whatnot. So don't try, don't try doing that, but let's keep it going. Two years of yep. CNBC, and I, my impression is the retail investor has never had it better. But what's wrong with more competition? I mean, this is what Gensler is talking about. So, for example, he's floated this proposal about let's do auctions for the retail people, that there's too much power concentrated in your hands, Virtu's hands, Citadel Securities, two, two of the main market makers out there. Is there a problem with having auctions? No, look, I, we find fundamentally advert to, and, and every market participant says, we, we welcome competition. We're not anti lit exchanges. And today, indeed, broker dealers, retail broker dealers, are free to send their orders to exchanges, to ATSs or dark pools, or, or, or to wholesalers. There's no obligation for them. Now, David Lauer has also spoken a lot about this. Because of the lack of liquidity in those lit markets, it actually makes it easier to trade through the ATS, which is not necessarily the best market. But because the liquidity has just been stripped from the overall market where it should be the main market. It's like the main chicks now the side chick and the side chicks now the main chick. The market's all effed up. Okay, keep it going. To send it to Virtu at Citadel, we provide a service. We provide guaranteed execution. We provide meaningful price improvement. $12 billion last year in meaningful price improvement. So we welcome competition from lit exchanges. Yeah. We've put in proposals to say that lit exchanges should be put on a more fair level playing field with wholesalers. We welcome that because, Bob, we're not internalizing all these orders. It costs us tens and tens of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars to source yeah. price improved liquidity on exchanges and provide well, that well, back to our clients. One of the things clients. that you've said for years is you do provide price improvement. Yep. You, you do actually help improve. You get a better price for it. Can you explain briefly how you do that? Because Chair Gensler has been very skeptical about that. Well, I'm not sure he's been so skeptical about it. I think some of the data, and he, he spoke about it today, the need for reform of Rule 605. So essentially, the rule is antiquated. It doesn't really cover the amount of what we call size improvement. And we've been very upfront and very transparent about providing that level of data. So what that means is, in the 8,000 names, I'm very happy that they've been upfront about something and transparent about something because the trades and the way the market works is not that. But keep it going, please. To the extent there's not liquidity on a, on a lit exchange, fundamentally, the wholesalers are providing infinite liquidity 
at the NBBO or the inside price. So if we get an order for 1,000 shares in Reg NMS stock that no one's ever heard of, yeah. and there's 200 shares on NASDAQ in New York, we fill out 1,000 shares at that inside price. That's meaningful liquidity. 55% yeah. of the orders that we received, Bob. I gotta bring that back. Hold on. Well, wait, 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 wait. We gotta bring that. We gotta bring that back just a second now. Hold on a second. So skeptical about it. I think some of the data, and he he spoke about it today. The need for reform of Rule 605. So essentially, the rule is antiquated. It doesn't really cover the amount of what we call size improvement. And we've been very upfront and very transparent about providing that level of data. So what that means is, in the 8,000 names, to the extent there's not liquidity on a on a lit exchange, fundamentally the wholesalers are providing infinite liquidity at the NBBO or the inside price. So if we get an order for a thousand shares, this motherfucker just say infinite liquidity. It's in Reg NMS stock that no one's ever heard of. Yeah. And there's 200 shares on NASDAQ in New York. We fill out a thousand shares at that inside price. That's meaningful liquidity. 55% yeah. of the orders that we received, Bob, we provide size improvement. In a complete, you know, as he calls it, an auction environment, who's going to provide yeah. that? The, so, the, the liquidity fairy? I mean, it just doesn't exist. This is a very complicated. If the shares aren't there to be purchased, the shares are not there to be. Who do I have to talk for someone to understand this? If the shares do not exist, they should not exist anywhere. It's, uh, well, who's going to provide these synthetic shares if it's not going to be us, Bob? Bob, it's got to be us. We have to provide these synthetic shares. Who? Th you know what? I might make a Twitter clip right now because I don't even want to wait to edit this video. I just want to get this shit out there right now. What the f this is on national you know what keep it going a proposal uh, there's not really a rules that's being proposed chair Gensler's is floating this idea yeah. and there's the implication is maybe in a few months we'll make a rule proposal do you think think anything is going to happen here uh, do you think there's actually going to be a rule proposed or are we just going to try to get more transparency more information my Gensler may have to settle for you providing more information on exactly how much it costs for payment for order flow. We're all about that. I mean, whatever the rule is in terms of providing transparency around how much payment for order flow, price improvement, set it at the midpoint, we're all ears. We've made those proposals. It's a little bit like punching a ghost right now, right? Because they, they have these high level statements that aren't really back, backed by any data, right? We've provided real data about what we do. We welcome the opportunity. We would welcome a roundtable. I don't know why the chair is not willing to engage the industry directly on this. I'd be happy to come with him on well, this program. Well, wait a minute. And you're saying he hasn't talked to you? You're, you're one of the biggest market makers in the United States. Are you saying he hasn't talked to you? I, I have spoken to the chair. Uh, I would like some more time with him. And I think you know uh, him coming to the industry and coming to Virtu and understanding what we do and how ultimately how competitive the marketplaces. He talks about two or three wholesalers. There's about 10 of us now. UBS is involved. Uh, Jane, Jane Street, Jump Trading, Hudson River Trading, uh, Susquehanna, Two Sigma. Anybody else can enter this marketplace. There's not a barrier to entry. There's not like an admission ticket that you need. Right? It's a competitive marketplace. Every day we're banging heads with Citadel Securities to provide the best service and the best price to 250 clients. And some days we lose and some days we win. We'll see if this goes anywhere, but Doug Seafood that part is true there is competition to see who can rip off retail investors the most guys it's, it's truth that's facts that's that's facts ceo virtu thanks very much for joining us and kelly i think the key point here is all right guys so just really quickly guys just to sum things up okay uh yep he basically did say that we could you know basically deliver infinite shares that is what he said i don't think it's actually infinite there's probably somewhere along the lines of a list of things that can and cannot be done but that is what it sounded like so i get that part um but two Yes, the marketplace is competitive for those who are also ripping off retail investors and front running the trades. I get that. But transparency in the market, the properly allocated amount of shares being transferred around account to account to account without being reapothecated is necessary. And yeah, a competitive market for where retail investors can get back into the main market where they actually should be trading as it was originally intended is what should be happening next. I don't care what this CEO or CFO, whoever the fuck his name is, was trying to say there. Anyways, guys, my name is TMI. I'm the Master Master. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, smash that like button, engage with the video. And of course, guys, hit that bell notification. New bill being passed for content creators like myself. Soon, you guys will not be getting notifications for a lot of these videos. So hit that bell notification just to make sure you guys do get notified. Much love, guys. Deuces.